let's get started. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, today, we will talk about how to foster cross-community collaboration uh, lessons learned by sharing our experience. So we will be using Alexio and Presto as an example. Uh, we will walk you through the process and share you uh, share with you our lessons and takeaways. Uh, first, a little bit introduction about uh, the speakers. So I'm Kay, Kay Wong. I'm a software engineer at Meta. So I've been in uh, Presto for about four years now. Uh, here's Bin. Hi, everyone. My name is Bin. Uh, I'm the founding engineer and API open source in Alexio. So I have been working, uh, I have been working in Alexio since the very beginning of the journey of the company and started to work with uh, uh, Meta and also the Presto team uh, since about in the end of 2019. Uh, all right, so let's go to the topic today. So first we will talk about uh, maybe a little bit introduction on those two projects, Alexio and Presto. So Bing, do you want to give introduction on Alexio? Yeah, so uh, Alexio is an open source project incubated from UC Berkeley AMP lab. At the beginning, it was more like a, a, a research project called Tachyon, and it's a uh, helping Spark to uh, persist the RDD files, RDDs as files in, using in-memory storage. And nowadays it becomes a general purpose file system that uh, different applications like uh, big data analytics or machine learning uh, frameworks can use to can use this as an abstract layer to access different storage with a unified API and unified namespace. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so move on to Presto. So Presto is an open source uh, SQL query engine that is fast, reliable, and efficient uh, at scale. So it's widely used to run interactive and ad hoc queries uh, at sub seconds uh, performance for high volume of data. Uh, so it's originally developed uh, in Meta and open sourced uh, in 2013. Now it's widely used and well adopted uh, inside Meta and also other companies like Uber, Twitter, Alibaba, etc. So uh, this is how everything started. So it begins with the prototype project called Reptex. Uh, Reptex proposed a new uh, disaggregated architecture uh, and aimed to boost query performance by at least 10x by adopting a comprehensive uh, caching solution. I won't go into too much details, but you can learn more about Reptex uh, in this blog. So uh, after prototyping and getting uh, a good performance number, we want to move fast and re, uh, reuse a library that can meet our requirements for our SSD caching. Uh, however, at that time, the existing solution at Meta is not open sourced and they're also uh, on a different language uh, stack. So Presto is an open source community. So ideally we hope to solve this problem by an open source collaboration. Uh, and magically, in a Presto meetup, we met with Alexio developers and instantly found a match at the time. So uh, I will let Bing tell the rest of the story. Yeah, thanks, OK. Uh, for the purpose of this discussion or this presentation, we will not go to the technical details, but rather just use the story to tell, to show you how the two different communities, two different teams of developers are working together towards the same goal. And the goal here is to uh, combine Presto and Aluxio together to fulfill what Raptor X is aiming at. So, uh, so first of all, you can see, uh, you can, like not surprisingly, we can see a lot of different challenges when two teams, two different open source projects, communities are working together. Uh, the first challenge I would say, or like many other uh, problems, is it's to get how to get this in a priority for your, uh, in your, organization here in both organizations so you can, because you can imagine for both teams, for me and also at that time for the tech lead in Presto, uh, we both have a lot of different items and uh, there are also for the top party, there can be different alternative solutions to that. 
And unless this is a party and endorsed by the leadership, it's hard to really get this. Even like we found it instance, instantly, there is a match between two projects who can go hand in hand. However, we have to make sure this is a blast and we need to make sure this can be endorsed and get enough resource allocated for this collaboration. Otherwise, it's hard to make any progress. Well, how do we achieve that? Uh, obviously, we want to convince the leadership from the technic, from a technology perspective. So we set up a quite a few meetings. I remember I was visiting uh, Meta at that time Facebook uh, quite a few times just to pitch the leadership, but also give the uh, like engineers a more uh, detailed deep diving about what Alexio is, how we implement this, and what are the collaborators, who are the developers, this type of a, a more details. And so in this way, we want to answer the technology or answer the questions with the technology. Uh, so that's the part one. And part two is really, we want to uh, illustrate what is the app potential, what is the benefit of doing this together. So essentially, both are two open source projects and we want to boost open source adoption. So there is nothing more than, nothing better than having another open source projects working together. So we can work with the other community and get a, a recognition and also get more uh, leads or more information from the other community. So um, by having, by putting this together, we see this really works well, uh, at least uh, for me and for at least the Presto team, uh, we get this blessed by the leadership. Next slide. Next challenge, just like a lot of other open source projects or any other projects, I will say, you always face a very tight timeline. And especially this is a first time collaboration. Um, I remember we started to talk with the Presto team lead in end of 2019, uh, when I was on vacation in Hawaii, we started a conversation. Um, but we want to, at, at that time we heard the timeline to get this Raptor X uh, shipped to production is in six months. Well, six months sounds like a lot, but if you think we need to start a project from zero and also we need to test it, we need to write a lot of documentation, we need to uh, also run a staging test, so it's really actually very aggressive timeline. So we divided the, this into different stages and really want to meet the timeline for each step. And also uh, you can think, uh, you can take a, take a look at the timetable here. We spent about, about one month working together to have the design together. Um, but later on, we spent in total maybe about two months to do the code implementation. I will see the initial draft of the code implementation. And for the last four or five months, we all spend in testing or to, or to optimize or to identify issues in a staging environment. So okay, you may still remember at that time, <clears throat> the code is there quickly, but it takes actually a lot of time to, for us to really uh, get this into a stage, which is uh, close to production ready because there's a lot of small issues here and there, like monitoring or resource, all kinds of different issues show, so shows up in, in the, in the, in the pre-staging environment. So um, yes, the take, I guess the takeaway here is do allocate enough time for testing, especially for near production or using real production workloads to do testing. That will uh, surface a lot of problems. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Like right now we are also starting new project as well. I, I, I really feel like the, the code actually is easy in some way because if you want to go to production, the long tail issue is really the pain and it might cost, like it might take longer time than the actual coding time. So yeah, like you said, prepare enough time, give yourself yeah. enough time for the project. So I, I'm really glad like in the beginning for this collaboration, we set a pretty aggressive timeline for code completion and then spend I guess 60% 60, 60 of the time really just for testing and to make sure uh, this, this, this project can be adopted in production environments. There's a lot of adoption or integration needs to be done. And also, even I said this is production uh, in June, 2020, <laughs> by far it means it's done, it's perfect done. 
uh, K may still remember. Like we spent a lot of time together. Even after that, there is a lot of issues. Like we need to go hand in hand, and we will go to more details in later slides. But I'm just saying here, the time frame here, having this June in 2020, is not a completion of the entire project. I will say it's just like the first major milestone for this project. Yeah. So uh, another interesting challenge to have two different projects working together is they may have different or totally different time release or release cycles and also bug escalation process. Uh, for example, for Aluxio at that time, uh, we were doing more like we call this a quarterly release. Every three to four months, we have one release. And I, so, so that means like if you in the staging environments or in the production we found an issue, unlike in the same repository or in the same project, you can always do the hotfix, go to the branch and do the hotfix and create another patch. That means in this case, Presto is using Luxio as a dependency. It's a Maven dependency of the Java project. So, so we need to make a release in order to deliver a patch to Presto. So that increases the complexity, but also increases the uh, time to deliver a patch dramatically. So in order to address this, uh, I talked to uh, different people in the Alexa community and we agreed that, hey, why don't we just let do, let's do some lightweight release instead of have a full bloom release cycle well, also you have to do the documentation, you have to do the run and release tests, you have to do the a lot of different things together and showing up this final present uh, final results in the websites, including documentation. We just do this Maven release. We call this Maven release or lightweight Maven release. So instead, whenever there's a bug is reported by the Facebook team, uh, we will just create a, we'll fix the bug first. And later on, we'll just create a Maven release which do, does not yield to the documentation or any other uh, any other release related tests just to boost this up. So in this case, I can do very frequent release. Uh, for example, I remember I can do this like two to three times a week uh, just by myself in order to address this uh, timely. So on Facebook side, they can test this. I, I also remember at that time you guys create uh, a, a kind of command for us to use to create the temporary like package so that we can include all those different logs so that next time when we are running in the environment we can collect more stats so that if the issue happened we have more 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 logs to look at to yes. find the issue yeah well we have to work very uh clever to, to make it work. Uh, otherwise, it, it, it is more complicated than just like uh, working in the same project, um, but it's, it's pretty fun. Yeah. Um, communication. So in the beginning of this collaboration, I remember we discussed, hey, how do we want to communicate? Uh, definitely we want the meetings. Uh, actually we said uh, cadence meetings on this, um, but still there's a lot of uh, one-off questions you have to answer or you have to uh, just, just to leave some message to, to other people to say, hey, what's going on there, right? So uh, we decided to create a shared Slack channel between Facebook team and Alexa team together to work on this. So we can be very responsive there. Uh, for example, whenever Kay finds anything that's going, not going well, and she can just ping, hey, Bim, uh, there's something you may need to pay attention. And this is the symptom there. So, uh, so in this way, they don't need to wait for the next meeting or weekly meeting to uh, for me to answer them. So I, I found like this is really working really well. But besides the fact, we also use emails. And uh, the way we're doing this is that we do di daily developments on Slack, but also for the major uh, critical decisions and also important agreements, they still go to emails because this is uh, something we can leave this as a written format. And so everyone can be aligned in a more formal way. And we found this combination of having both email and Slack works pretty well for us. Uh, also, I want to add one more thing is that people really matters in like communication. Like if the people in collaboration is not responsive, the problem could be deferred longer and the, the issue will be resolved later. Uh, I find that at that time, people from both our uh, companies are actually very responsive. So actually whenever an issue just pop up 
like like the the next day we come up with a plan now already figure out what it is so it's really like important that to stay responsive during those communicate communication channel also peer pressure <laughs> yeah, <laughs> once yeah. i see key k is on top of everything i i i tell myself hey then you have to be on top of these things too we are pushing each other okay <laughs> next slide yeah that's good next slide um also, as you can see, like working in organizations, especially now two organizations are working together, uh, we have to deal with the responsibility to change or people churn or team growth. And uh, because it takes for a while, it takes two quarters. Actually, even right now, we're still working together on this project. So uh, in order to do this more smoothly, to do the transition more smoothly, we take some preventative solutions, including uh, writing well-documented uh, knowledge down. So uh, including product vision, design, implementation, we have a very long design doc there with a lot of uh, uh, very detailed tips. So uh, whenever someone in Facebook, they need to be onboarding to this project, we can just transfer the knowledge. Hey, back reading this documentation has all the information you need. Plus read all the appendix, because all the appendix are uh, created there for a reason, because there is some incidents or there's a discussion around so um we make this is really clear well documented uh, makes the makes the collaboration much easier uh, but also just to run the project together with the pre-owner and new new owner for for a little while so we know the transition uh, for example originally i was the prim primary owner for uh, a luxo site on this project and later on uh, we have another um key team member joining uh, and Benan, he is taking the ownership from me. So I was shadowing him for uh, a month or two and I felt, found he is uh, perfectly driving this through. So I just leave this to, to him and it runs so very well so far. Yeah, so it's it requires the collaboration between the two different owners to work on this together. So they don't know each other. What's the, what's the convention there? What's the uh how how was the bidding was like before and also we want to settle the ownership change very clearly uh once who is working on what and internally like we have very clear documentation that who should be responsible for what in this case even certain responsibility is changed uh, it, it, it like it's clear that there's no confusion yeah i remember in 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 Meta, we have James starting working on this project and then Rohit and then me and then a lot of people come like work, work those things and but it's very amazing that we can still keep the momentum going on from like uh, January to December after like when we finally land those changes in our production reli reliably. So it's really a great um, uh, collaboration and I think those documentation really helps uh, in, in this situation. So actually internally, I also have a lot of uh, uh, internal documentation just to help, to, to just help me remind who is doing what and also <laughs> where we are. For oh, I didn't know this. <laughs> yeah, so it, it helps me greatly. I think. Next slide, please. So um, the actual challenge here we see, especially after 2020, is the pandemic, as you can imagine. Um, and it start from early 2020, a lot of companies they, uh, in Silicon Valley, they started to implement the working from home policy. And uh, in this impacts both teams for the Luxio team and also Meta team. And by doing this, we have less chance to meet each other, but also, uh, it's just like a more communication cost, of, oh, more communication overhead is added, right? Um, well, so, I mean, this is a generic problem. It's not only to us or to this project, but to, uh, I guess, at that time, to my company, or I guess to also Presto for your project too, right? So the, uh, to me, it goes, really goes down to how to do the relationship building. How do we build trust? Even we don't uh, meet each other face to face. Uh, prior to the pandemic, we actually do have a cadence meetings. Uh, we, grab, we grab lunch together or sometimes uh, grab coffee together. Uh, but now, because the because the pandemic, so we have to know the direction partner 
more in person as a friend and understanding each individual goals, project goals, and content goals, and align this, pay extra attention or effort to align these goals and interest. Um, and also just, it's very important to have that regular meeting cadence um, to make sure people are on the same page, especially they are not in the, in the same office. So actually prior to pandemic, the way we're doing this is, uh, especially during the very active developing phase, uh, each week, either I go to Facebook office or someone from the Presto team go to my office so we can sit in the same office to talk to each other. So, and that also helps pretty, uh, dramatically. Um, the yeah, last one is, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I was just want to say, hopefully people won't be facing the same challenge again, <laughs> but yeah, those but are good practice. Yeah, those are good practice, but also I think the team is getting more virtual nowadays in the uh, in the valley. Uh, more team, more team, more different employee, uh, team members are joining in different companies. They're they're working in different cities. Um, I don't know. Maybe this can be a norm in the future. But essentially, um, especially working with the distant remote teams or distributed team, I would put it that way. Especially across different companies, having a cadence meeting and knowing each other very well. It's very important. That, that's the, like, I keep emphasizing on this. Mm -hmm. okay. so, um, so I think we covered the most about the process and also the uh, um, communication process, this type of challenges. I want to spend a little bit more time to go to the technical challenges too. Um, I think because I think this is interesting, like, uh, and also to show the value of this project. Yeah, the, first, uh, first of all, to me, the key challenge in this case is, hey, I wrote a code. The code is not that complicated, but the problem is if you want to deploy the code, deploy your algorithm uh, at Facebook or at meta scale, that has a lot of different challenges. Uh, for example, like in meta, they have a huge amount of resource you have to manage. And this carefully, that means we have to carefully use the file system operations because we're using a large SSD to manage data. And because the, the amount, total amount of volumes of queries, and if we're not using the file system cost carefully, this can be, it can be very expensive. But also uh, we see the disk and the file system errors can be expected, especially when we are, uh, Alexa is deployed on a meta scale. Um, I mean, hard, uh, system failures and hardware failures. That's what I mean. In this case, we do see one of the two cases that syscalls, Linux syscalls to the disk are no longer considered as a reliable or have a determinist return. So we have to implement something like, a, uh, in this case, a two-phase commit in order to, for some common, for some common operations that we have to implement this to save the data to prevent potential disk failures. And also, uh, especially handling for caching data at a Facebook Presto scale, you have to handle the case that there will be no restart. And because the restart can be planned or unplanned, there can be a lot of data you have to bring back to your library or to, your, to, to this project. So uh, in, the, in the first iteration, the implementation takes 40 minutes to, just to read back all the data dumped on the disk, which is totally unacceptable. So we, uh, and we didn't realize this because we didn't realize that that's the, how, how much Facebook, like one, in a single node, you have set, uh, you, have, you, have, you have so many data, so much data. So we have to, uh, after the feedback, like we work together to find a way to uh, work this around instead of blocking the cost, we can make, we move this into the background. But it, essentially I'm, I'm saying like having this real design for Facebook scale is, uh, is quite challenging. The last one is very interesting, interesting uh, experience. So one day, like after we rolled out a new release for Facebook and they're telling us, hey, then we noticed the CPU utilization is increased by 1%. So we need to fix this issue. And this was never actually an issue for me before. I, we have our internal in-housing test, I, but I didn't really pay attention to the level of 1% CPU utilization increase, right? But this means a lot for the company like Metascale. So uh, it turns out it's some public configuration uh, uh, 
like we are using the configuration twice and uh, there's some parsing can be considered expensive. So we need to work this around. But essentially the lesson for me is uh, working at that scale, saving every single 1%, either CPU utilization or memory utilization or network utilization means a lot. Okay. Um, Another interesting challenge is here because we are two different companies, like uh, unlike the Presto team developers, they can go to the production host or production service to uh, check what's going on there. Uh, I cannot access their production environments and I cannot access the production log. And the best I can do is to just ask them, hey, uh, I know you have another incident, but how can you help me to identify what's going on there? Especially given they're running this on a thousands or tens of thousands different nodes, right? So we have to build a comprehensive magic system to understand the cluster data from their dashboard. And they have a wonderful dashboarding system. By the way, this is a, uh, to me, this is a really awesome dashboarding system to help. So essentially we have to sit down together and to work carefully write down all these important or potentially important metrics. So they can at least tell me from this metrics, they observe what's going on there and how they can help me to develop the system. And in next slide, I can talk about more. So only having metrics is not enough. So especially uh, a lot of times there's error, different error cases. And because I can, again, I cannot access their production environments. I cannot access the production logs. So what we can do is uh, we, I think this is a pretty interesting way to solve this. It's basically in each error case, uh, in each like exception thrown from the, from, the, from the system, we assign a unique counter to this. So this unique counter can be exposed to their dashboarding system. So in this case, even I from extra, from extra, from, 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 from a Luxu team cannot access their production logs, well, at least we know which type of uh, errors they are seeing. Like this is really, really specific errors. So, and given the sequence and given the time series of this, it's really, it turns out very powerful for me to help debugging system issues. Um, and also sometimes it's, it's a misconfiguration, like a human communication is very important. Uh, like there's a one issue we found is because the configuration, they only have 600 gigabytes available on the disk, but they configure this to be one terabytes and turns out it creates uh, some problems with the, with the with Presto. So essentially I'm saying like, even there's a lot of dashboarding, there's this very accurate, a very convenient way to watch what's going on there. Human errors is still inevitable. Like we need to watch closely and in order to actually eliminate the possibility to have some human errors there. Next slide. Okay. So the quick summary for the technical, uh, so disks, when you're really when you're running on a meta scale, disks are not that reliable. You have to design the system, design the algorithm to cope with the uh, issues when disks can fail. And humans are not reliable. This configuration can happen. This operation can happen, and um, yeah. So we need you need to be prepared for that. Next slide. So uh, we talked about a lot of collaboration, the technical challenges, right? So where are we today? And in Meta, this project Wrapper X has landed in the end of 2020, and it has been used widely, widely in Facebook, and we have uh, some blog to talk about. I think there is a, one more blog uh, on Presto website and there's actually a paper recently uh, published in Sigma talking about this collaboration or part of, as a part of the paper. Uh, but also this influenced other team members, other community members, uh, like in Uber, this, they, they write the Facebook collaboration uh, between Alexio and Presto and they want to say, hey, how can replicate the success here so Uber started to work with us also on this pro similar project. And this has also been in production uh, since last year. And Uber has also published a blog on this. Next slide. Okay, uh, I, I believe this is the, we're getting to the end. This is the last slide. 
in terms of the user journey, uh, like the journey, uh, what are the takeaways? Um, first of all, I think it's a great that both communities, Presto and Luxio, are open source communities. So this creates a lot of uh, synergy there. And we are both in the big data analytics community. And technically, the trend of having a disaggregated architecture makes cache important uh, in Presto, in Presto uh, deployments for Facebook Meta. And also the caching, the client caching is a tighter integration with the compute. So this is also product, product learning from Luxo. And summarizing this up together, I think this is a great journey for me personally, but also for, for my team to work with the Meta team. And uh, I believe we learned a lot along the way and the collaboration is still continuing. Yeah, I want to add one or two aspects to, to this slide as well. Like one is people, like people need to be responsive and responsible for like all the issues we see, um, like, like I mentioned before. And the second one is the culture. I think kind of moving fast is kind of a, a culture we need when we do collaboration between two companies. And so, yeah, that's the two, two aspects I want to add here. Thanks, Kate. I, I think this is a, uh, we're just sharing what we're seeing in this collaboration. Hopefully you find this useful. If you have any uh, questions, feel free to uh, find us or find me uh, in the Slack channel from Luxio. I'm happy to answer. Uh, I'm running the open source initiative in Luxio. So uh, I'm open to more collaborations. Thank you. All right, thanks. Thank you, everyone.